You want to see how to do the quick install and my thoughts on the Panda status? Well, stick around. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm Rick and this is Directed Tech. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Panda status. Now, many of you have asked me to uh, see if I could get my hands on one of these to do a, a review. And I reached out to a VChu and they were kind enough to send me this unit. They've actually been out of it for a while, so it's taken me a little bit of time to get my hands on one, but I wanna thank them for providing this to me. Again, kind of like what I did with the, um, the Panda Jetpack. I don't know if I've published that video yet or not, but uh, it's kind of gonna, this video will be somewhat between a installation how-to and a review. I'm not gonna do the whole pros and cons thing. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to put it in. I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, now let's get this in there. First, let's answer the question that everybody always asks. What's in the box? So we have the Panda status bar itself. We have the wireless control module. We have a USB-C cable. We have a cleaning cloth and alcohol pad, the LED cable. We have some fabric strips to hold down the wires. We have several 3M adhesive strips, and there's already it's adhesive strips already on the Panda status bar. And then we have a new rubber grommet that has a cutout here for the USB-C cable to pass through. Now, there are a couple of pieces that you'll need to print to complete this installation. These are available on the Big Tree Tech website or through the wiki and installation instructions. You can also find it on Maker World. But there are two parts that you will need to print before you start the installation. The second step is to install the circuit board. Here we have the fully assembled circuit board in its case. Step three is to remove the PTFE tube silicone plug. So we're going to press in this blue part right here, push that in, and that will pop off. Once that is complete, we can remove the PTFE tube and we will now remove this whole silicone plug. Step four is to take the USB-C end of the included cable, pass it through this slot here, and then connect it to the control board, just like so. Step five is to compress this spring mechanism and install this into this slot and then slide it right as shown in their picture, which basically lines these two ports up with this screw right here. It'll get stopped by uh, that screw back there. So that's a nice snug fit. Once you have the box in place, you will then attach the power cable for the Panda status bar to this port here. There is a little key notch on the bottom, but these two ends are the same, so it doesn't matter which end you plug in here. That little notch is going to go facing down toward the heat bed. Step six is to secure the USB-C cable and reinsert the silicone plug. I've gone ahead and pushed the PTFE tube through and reattached all of the connectors. Note how the USB-C cable is now sticking out of the notch. On the wiki, they show using the original cable or the original silicone plug with the end just kind of flapping free to give space for the USB-C cable. Uh, I chose to use the one that was included that has the notch. And now here comes the fun part. We are going to tape down the power cable and we are gonna follow the path as indicated in the instructions, but it is basically here, we're going to go through these little channel uh, wire holders, come right down over this hump, and then go down underneath the heat bed. Here we have the first piece of tape installed, and here we have the second piece of tape installed. The third piece of tape runs down at an angle here uh, toward the fan, and then continuing down under the heat bed. Step eight is to use the included alcohol wipe to clean the front and bottom portion of the heat bed, and then use the included cloth to dry those same areas. Step nine involves inserting the power cable into this Panda status bar. Again, it is notched. That is gonna go toward this plate here. So we'll plug that in, then we will remove the adhesive tape and then install it 
right on the front of our heat bed. It says that the best adhesion will happen after about 24 hours. I'm going to give this a nice firm press for about 30 seconds. We can go ahead and remove our protective film on the front here. And step 10, the final step, is to secure the power cable uh, to the heat bed using the tape again in roughly this position here as indicated by the instructions. All right, now let's get the Panda status connected and bound to our printer. The first thing we're going to do is go to our Wi-Fi settings. We are going to choose, we should have a Panda status. We'll go ahead and connect to that. The default password is 9876543 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, and then we are presented with the web page for the Panda status. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my language. I will hit next. I will then choose the Wi Fi that I want it to be connected to. It looks like it is searching. There is my Wi Fi. And I will go ahead and input my Wi-Fi password. One moment, please. And we'll hit connect. We are now connected to the internet. And once we are connected, we will hit the scan button. Do make sure that you turn your printer on before this. Once that is completed, you can select your printer. Some of the information will show up. You will need to go to the printer and find the access code. The, if you go back to the instructions, they do show you where to find your access code, depending on which printer you are trying to bind the Panda status to. Once you have that entered, you hit bind. And you should see this message here that says binding is successful. Once that is done, you can go over to the control panel and you will see your panda status there. You can choose your lighting effect. It has several settings here. Let's take a look at what we have. Right now it's set to music, so it has got a built-in microphone. And I'm going to clap here and you can see it responding there. We can also set to H2D mode, which is where I'm going to leave it. And then we have various colors that will light up depending on what the status is of the printer. So now that we have that set, we'll do a quick test print. All right, folks, there you go. That is the Panda status from Bichu. I want to thank them again for sending that out to me. I cannot even tell you how much I enjoy this product, or I know I will enjoy this product. Ever since I got the H2D, I've loved the status bar along the bottom. It is so nice to be able to just walk by your printer and see what's happening. You've got you know, the percentage or kind of the progress of the print going, as you saw there in the demo. Sometimes you'll walk by the printer and you see that flashing red bar and you're like, oh, something's wrong. I mean, I don't always have my phone with me. I don't always, I'm not always at the computer. So I can't count on handy apps or you know, handy notifications to tell me that something's going on with the printer. So it's super nice. I'm, I'm loving the fact that I will now have that same capability on the P1S. Now, the only downside I would say to this, um, actually, let me back up just a second. Just so you know, I would give yourself probably 45 minutes to an hour to do this installation. You are going to need access uh, kind of all around the printer, the back, obviously, you're going to need to get up under the heat bed. Um, it's not difficult whatsoever. You just, you know, following the instructions, et cetera, if you're using this video, it might go a little bit quicker because you're not going to have to uh, decode some of the pictures. But uh, again, the only downside I would say is the fact that you're going to have to route a USB you know, power port somewhere near this printer. Um, the cable's not super long right now. I have it running off a battery back just because of where it's at. And once I get it where back in its home position, I will have to come up with a solution to get that, you know, five volt USB uh, port up there. Now, Bichu does have solutions for that. If you go to their website, they have all sorts of things there. I do have, I believe it's the Panda branch 
um, on my A1, so that would give me you know the the ports that I need. I just don't have it on the P1S. But anyway, great product. I know I'm gonna love having this installed on my P1S. So. I would appreciate it if you enjoyed this content, please take a moment, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know when I drop new content. As always, I enjoy the time that we get to spend together here on the channel, so let's keep on learning, burning, printing, and growing together. Take care, everyone.